I think it all comes from St Kilda, that anticipation of going to see band and St Kilda's history, that slightly seedy, it was still that sort of happening place and coming from southeastern suburbs, which was pretty Boresville. And then, <laughs> but all you did was just come up Nepean Highway and there was like this, there was the hub of everything and music and different fashions and people and food and it was all alive. Yeah, it was a slightly different world. It was the late 1970s and I'd moved into a share house in St Kilda. I loved the area and I can still recall being surprised and energised by the sounds, the drive and the smoky culture pumping out of the Crystal Ballroom at the Seaview Hotel, especially Nick Cave and the boys next door. I wanted to ask some of my colleagues about their musical experiences and so we chatted about St Kilda. Seaview Ballroom, you know, first impressions, just walking in through those doors um, is indicative of a lot of, um, or, or, or St Kilda in itself. It's, it's staying to high heaven with all the smoke and, um, and it's really true about the carpet. I mean, like your shoes just stuck to the carpet. <laughs> You'd have to sort of lift them up like this to try and get your feet off. And going into the toilets was an experience. You'd see all these girls in there looking pretty weird and putting all kinds of weird makeup on. It was very atmospheric and it was really well designed for people who were feeling really depressed, existentially wanting to end the world or something. <laughs> it seemed to fit that vibe. The Crystal Ballroom exploded musically during these years and existed largely outside my cultural sphere, especially growing up in a Greek family. This music was also so different to the commercial radio pop of 3XY and the ABC's Countdown. Even though I could catch Tom Waits live at Monash Uni and Lou Reed at the Palais in the late 1970s, live music in Sekilda really was another world. And there was a couple of my friends that were just, we just want to see live music and we want to see Australian music. Bananas was another small club. Well, my experience was when you'd go there after your own gig and just hang out there till dawn or whatever. But, you know, we did play there. Um, it was good to play there. It was one of those cool kind of places. Hunters and collectors. Human Frailty had come out in 86 and it was their first big commercial album. And we'd been following them for a couple of years and then all of a sudden there was all they were quite commercial so it was like all these interlopers were here to see their band. Mark Seymour is sweating away at the front in his blue singlet and show off his pecs and that because he was a runner. So they played three encores, played throw your arms around me four times. And my main person who I really wanted to see was what was then called the boys next door. Because I was small, I'd sort of sneak my way right up to the front. So I was standing right underneath Nick Cave and, um, and it was pretty exciting. That little devil on your shoulder, got a hold on you. I was also really impressed by the clothes and the fashions of the ballroom culture. St Kilda may have been seedy, but there was so much going on. And it just had that kind of seedy, because you know, you're living there in Melbourne, it's this sort of squeaky clean suburban town in the 80s. But you're reading about like CBGB in New York or something and all this kind of thing, or you know, Brixton in London. And you think, I want a bit of that, you know? <laughs> and the closest we could come was St Kilda. But when I'm saying that it's seedy, I find it, I understand it's attractive. I understand it's culture. I understand what it is and I'm not judgmental on it, but it's not necessarily derogatory. You know, it's a charm. And of course I'd be wearing totally all black and um, black eyeliner. 
and I had dyed blonde hair. So lots of black and sort of trying to be cool Melbourne black. Bright red lipstick and lots of eyeliner. So trying to be against the, like stand out against the mainstream. Wearing all these op shop kind of clothes and, and my father refused to see me wearing them. I'm not going out with you looking like that, he'd say. It was that real op shop ethos. The whole thing in the music, in the culture, in the dress, was about reusing things. The cheap housing was the unused apartment over the shop. And the absolute ideal was to live over an op shop. Like that was heaven. <laughs> and if it was in St Kilda, so much the better. You know, it was a place where musicians lived and it had its own musical culture and it attracted musicians that were drawn to that atmosphere. So, I mean, if the example is Paul Kelly, well, you can see a lot of influences in that inner city life where artistic people can look at that and draw from it. Nick Cave has a sizable legacy of published material at the State Library Victoria, and a search on the catalogue brings up over 100 entries, including his novels, his pictures, and music. Other musicians who performed at the Crystal Ballroom and other venues in St Kilda do not have the same publishing legacy, but digging through the library catalogue and the internet reveals a wealth of material on the Australian music world and the legacy of the St Kilda scene lives on in these collections. The film Dogs in Space and the documentary We're Living on Dog Food by ballroom attendee Richard Lowenstein, together with the book The Ballroom by Dolores San Miguel, a band booker of the Seaview Hotel in the late 1970s, offer vibrant accounts of the St Kilda scene and give a glimpse of the rock and roll lifestyle. The State Library has an impressive collection of material on the Australian and Melbourne music scenes. Searching our catalogue for your favourite band or musician could return recorded music, live concert DVDs, a book, poster and flyer ephemera, zines or even an old band website. Searching Melbourne's Metropolitan Daily Newspapers for the weekly gig guide listing or specialist music magazines like the Alternative Gig Guide and Duke will show you who played and where. Online, there are also resources worth checking, including The Punk Journey, From the Archives fan site, The St Kilda Music Walking Tours, and many others. Mm -hmm.